There are a number of different minerals present in the earth, both in the crust and deeper down. One of these is olivine, a yellow-green mineral made from magnesium, iron and silicon. It's actually fairly common within the earth, but rarer on the surface as it's subject to weathering rather rapidly. Like many minerals, it often contains impurities within it, and also it can be found in different forms, especially when subjected to heat and pressure. One of these forms is called ringwoodite, named after Ted Ringwood. Instead of generally being green, it can be bright blue, but then again, colour will depend on specific impurities within it. It also can contain within its structure hydrogen and oxygen ions, bound together in a one-to-one -one ratio, forming hydroxide, meaning that it is possible, under certain circumstances, that ringwoodite could contain between 2 and 3% water in this particular form. Knowing for certain if ringwoodite does actually contain water is difficult, and that the main source of the form is actually from meteorites, which may or may not be representative of it as it is on Earth. Only one actual example so far has been found of actual terrestrial origin. This is because it's formed at a depth of about 500 kilometers on Earth. However, this does lead us to some important speculations. If Ringwoodite makes up a large proportion of the transition zone of the mantle, which does actually seem very likely, and if it contains hydroxide ions, which is actually uncertain at this time, it could mean that there is more than three times as much water beneath the earth as there actually is above it. One of the problems has always been with science is where did the water on earth actually come from in the first place? The suggestion has been made that they were brought to earth by comets, however there have always been some problems with that solution. With ringwoodite it is possible that rather than raining down from above the actual water was actually squeezed up from below. It is, however, early days with this theory. Much more research is needed if possibly more examples of terrestrial ringwoodite are required to make certain whether or not this is the case or not. But it's certainly an interesting theory.